So that was Tokyo versus Yokohama. Was that scatting in there? Scatting? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely jazzy. I mean, I don't, well, how did you, how would you describe these two songs? <laughs> this is sort of like a bebop kind of song. Yeah, this, um, Definitely, it's got that jazzy. I'd, I'd say the first song you'd actually was in black and white. This one feels like it's in Technicolor. It's sort of those 1960s movies you'd watch mm, on a, a Sunday. It's a really good tango. Mm, yeah. Definitely more Latin. Perfect. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, you know, Yurakujo. That feels like uh, prosperity coming, and this is clearly we're going to go party, have a good time. So during this period of, uh, of reconstruction, like uh, past the war, you might not know this, but like, how, how like successful were these like entrepreneurs in terms of like gaining people to to watch them entertain? Like, how was the entertainment industry during this time period? Like, was it doing well, or was it a bit halted by what had happened and being and like being forced to rebuild? Well, I well, I can't give you an answer about the economics of it. But I do know towards the 60s and 70s, people were talking about million sellers. Um, people were selling music. There was Enka happening, and there was also something called Kayo Kyoku coming up in the 70s and 80s, where that was more the popular song. I mean, the roots were kind of the same. I think Kayo Kyoku, maybe that's probably a little more poppy. And I think that evolved more into J-pop, where this Enka, it's probably only about 10, 15 percent. Now, nowadays, it's only about 10 to 15 percent of music sales, but back in the 60s and 70s, yeah, you know, selling a million singles, um, you know, three million, not uncommon. Given the fact that Japan is half the size of the U.S., I mean, these are pretty pretty good numbers for domestic sales only. Um, yeah, this is Enka. Pretty much is domestic music. It's starting to get an international following, but it uh, this is domestic music. So if you're looking for something uniquely Japanese, this is this is a good place to start. So I'm going to play just one more geographically inclined. This one is not so much a place. This one is more of a feeling. I'll play it first, and we'll, we'll talk about it afterward. And you can tell me what you think. We'll compare the three songs. Okay, so what place were they talking about? Akita. Akita. Where's Akita? Tohoku. Tohoku, north. So this song is about going home. So this is definitely, well, I don't know, how would you describe this song? Very jaunty. It's optimistic. It's a little optimistic. On like a nice little journey. Definitely, going home. His mom is, well, it's, this is about the one that got away. And he's going to go home to 
to try and find the girl and his mom saying, yeah, well, she would have made a great wife, but she got away. So this is definitely images of going north, going home. So out of these three songs, I mean, any final thoughts on geography? Well, you think I actually owe a couple of people a present. A couple of, Kevin gets one. That aim, I thought there was someone else back here. The gentleman in the back. We have masking tape from, uh, I think this one's Kanazawa. No, it's from a, a shrine, Jinja. I'm going to flip it back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> But you were saying thoughts about these three. Yeah, it sounds like when you're two anchor singers, when you're in the city, you're supposed to be sad. But when you get to go home, that's when you get to be happy. <laughs> Going home. And apparently nobody's from the city. You had your, ho your home has to be somewhere more innocent, yeah. more free and open. More he, rural? More rural. Yeah, there's definitely some of that. <coughs> I, can, I mean, I guess the point I want to make about Enka is yeah, you, you go north and you, you heal your soul, sort of, but I mean, in Enka, it's kind of like you could go to couples therapy and maybe solve your problems, but that doesn't happen in Enka. There's no self-help. There's no, uh, it's just all about wallowing in your pain and enjoying it, that nostalgic <laughs> feeling. You lose. Take that out. You die. You're going to die. You lose. You get thrown away. But go north. But go north. Go north. Why, why not? Yeah. You had a question. Um, I was going to say, um, I'm not sure which instrument was... Uh, The one that sounded like that, I'm not sure which instrument that was, but it definitely sounded very like traditional, like I guess like reminiscent of older times. Yeah, I agree. It definitely had that feeling. The instrument, I'm not sure. I want to think it's the Chinese lute, but yeah. again, I'm not sure um, if there are any other musicians who understand Hanka music. I thought maybe I'm wrong. I thought it sounded a little bit like a, a koto. A koto. I was thinking koto, I mean, I think... Maybe a little bit too bright to be a koto line. Well, it sounded a little bit too high to me, but then it, it might be a koto. Uh. You keep... But yeah, that's going north. Feel good. A little more jaunty. Just to our sound man, because I can't get YouTube, what I'd like to do is just play a couple of songs that I found on YouTube. So can you turn down the, the sound while I unplug this? So not to blow up the system. <laughs> Yes, please. No, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, well, a couple of songs that I wanted to play that I don't actually have recordings of, but the first one, just bringing Inca into the modern age, we've talked a lot about 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, but as an African American, I can't leave this room unless I talk about Jado. Jerome Charles White, he is from Pittsburgh. His grandmother is of Japanese descent, father, African American. Um, but he is a sensation back in 2008. He went to Japan as an English teacher doing computer programming and he became an Enka sensation. And his style, he, he wore like a Pittsburgh Steelers uh, jersey, he'll put on a baseball cap. I'm not too much of a fan of his do-rag, but he is credited with revolutionizing 
Enka and making it more attractive for young kids. Because again, Enka has kind of the old people image, but he was this, this cool breath of fresh air who came on the scene. And he, I don't know, his grandmother used to make him listen to these songs. They'd listen to them together. And her dream for him was to go sing on Koaku Utagasen. Are you familiar with that? No. A couple of folks. So every year at New Year's, for four hours, starting at about 7 o'clock, they have this big four-hour epic concert. They have the red team versus the white team. So anybody who's had a big hit, anybody who's been on the music scene for the, for forever, they're part of this music sensation. So if you make this show, then you've, you've arrived. And he was actually one person, again, African-American from the States, sang Japanese, and he got on this show. So I mean, that, that's like, it's like being on the Grammys, the Academy all rolled up into one. I mean, back in the olden days, people would be so nervous they'd forget the lyrics of their songs when they get on this program. So, yeah, you, you got to give this man props for coming out. Um, say hi to more family. This is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's one thing I wanted to play. So again, send me a link and I'll send you a few videos. But one other thing, because we're here in Anime Boston, there's not a whole lot of Enka in in anime. Because I mean, a lot of anime is very cute and poppy. You've got cute people doing cute things and it's all very cute. But there's one anime, uh, Gokusen. This is about, well, anyone familiar with Gokusen? A couple folks. The main idea was that there's this girl. She is a teacher in the school. She gets put with the bad kids and she whips them into shape and they have a lot of respect for her. But her big secret is she's in the Yakuza. Yakuza, very conservative, very straight ahead. It's like the military. So the ending theme for this particular anime was an Inca song. It's very sad, and I love it. And the ending credits, they have this great animation going by in the end. Um, and I wanted to play that. But again, Gokusen, go check that out, ending theme. That also by Aki Yashiro, who did the Funa Uta song. So maybe that's her specialty doing these uh, heartfelt, these heartfelt songs. Um, we've got, you know, a few minutes left. Are there any final questions? I'm running out of, I have one hair clip, if anyone has long hair and they'd like to clip their hair up. And I also have postcards of Kyoto, one of the more traditional cities of Japan. This is King Kakuji. This is uh, the Golden Pavilion. Um, but yeah, ask a question, get a postcard, or just come up and get any remainders. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to add on the note of, like, younger Inca singers. I don't yes. know, like, how many... There are, there are overall in the industry, but one interesting example is Iwasa Misaki. She's a former member of AKB48. <laughs> so she, she had like the best voice in the group, and like her also like from her family, she gained like got interested in Inca, and now she's uh, going as a solo Inca singer. And she even got invited to J-Pop Summit last year in San Francisco. Nice. Um, and then I. I think she, her um, agency, which is called Nagara Productions, I think also has like this male group of like three, three or four young Enka singers as well. So what's the name again? Iwasa Misaki. Iwasa Misaki. Can you send me an email of that? Yeah, just flip sure. up my. Yeah. So she, yeah, she has her own like solo. Um, singles, and then she's done a like cover album of a lot of old Inca songs. Yeah, so definitely a lot of good people with a lot of good chops singing Inca. I mean, a lot of these people have been doing it 30, 40 years. So. And the other thing, if you're trying to learn Japanese, Inca is pretty good because the speaker or the singers, they're very, very good pronunciation. So even if you don't know the words, you can still hear like woman, seagull, kamome, <laughs> ame, rain. Uh, she knew that. I <laughs> Um, you mentioned that Enka is more likely to be in detective shows or dramas, things like that. What about Enka in movies? Does that happen anymore? Was that ever a thing? Was it ever, uh, were there ever Enka theme songs for movies? Um, I don't know. Now I will say, in Japan, TV it was more popular. There's more money put into TV than actual movies. Okay. Just historically, that's been the way. Um, <coughs> But yeah, interesting to find out. I, yeah, I don't know the use. I, mean, I should say I'm not an Enka expert. I love the feelings that I get from it, and I you know, know the people that I like, and I listen to their music. 
But if anyone has more information, let me know because I'm always trying to improve what I know. And also, because Enga is domestic, a lot of what's written about it is written in Japanese. Um, I do read Japanese, but it takes me forever. So if, if you know something, let me know. And if I've said anything incorrect, please let me know that also. Um, you mentioned something about a uh, the uh, the possible like international reach of Enka like from long ago and how it, it attempted to reach from beyond Japan. Um, I was wondering if you knew about a Korean movie called The Handmaiden. I don't well, I don't know it, or at least offhand, I don't know it. All right. Well, the theme song for the movie um, uses quite a bit of instrumentation. Well. The mo the melodic sa well the melody of the theme song reminds me a bit of Enka in that it's written with a lot of minor chords, um, <coughs> very strong string sections. It does have a bit of a pop infusion in with the acoustic intro that uses, and it's sung by two female vocalists. So there's a combination of a a pop side of it, and then there's the Enka side. Um, it reminds me a bit of Enka with that melancholy autumnal tone, but the lyrics in English, it's about listening to your lover, lover's footsteps arriving in the hopes that it's them. And it it, basically, it, it bases that idea on love. And I, was, and I was just asking because I was wondering if you had heard it. and But I could send you an email. Yeah, so. definitely. So one thing I will say is, Japan being the biggest country in the region, they export a lot of their music and then it gets localized into the local language. So I know when I was living in Japan for a while, I knew the songs, and I went to, to Thailand, I'm like, wait, that's a Japanese song, but yeah. no, they're not singing Japanese. No. But yeah, a lot of music gets exported, so <coughs> definitely, I'd say in Korea, yeah. there's a very good chance you're gonna hear a Japanese song. Yeah, I, also, um, I also wanted to share, I believe there's another instance of Enka used in anime, but it's more for like a comedic uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. It there was there's the, there was a show about ten years ago.